Hi, I'm Dean Dribble. I am CEO of Agoric. I'll hide over here so you can see the beautiful slides. Um, Agoric is a uh, Cosmos based blockchain, you know, uh, common PFT, um, for doing smart contracts in JavaScript, particularly for dealing with the cross chain, multi chain, asynchronous world. And so I'm going to talk a lot about what that brings to the chain interaction table. But first, I want to celebrate some success because a lot of what we're now faced with is a problem created by an important milestone on the way to real value to the world. And, you know, we, we do that. But we've got all these different systems, chains, tokens, applications, etc., cetera, that, that are solving various problems that are now connected with protocols like IBC, you know, all these different interconnect protocols, cross-chain protocols, wormholes, gateway, you know, uh, uh, Axelar, etc., that create these connected islands of functionality and islands of assets that are worth collectively, I think yesterday it was $2.2 trillion, of liquidity spread across all these different services. And that's a marvelous success that we should be really happy about. But it creates this new environment where what do users get? And you heard these examples earlier, right? Fragmented liquidity, $2.2 million with a million here and a million there, and pretty soon you're talking real money. Um, they get no clear entry plan, right? If a user comes up and they've got three choices, they can make that. When they get a thousand choices from a thousand applications and a thousand chains, the answer is I'm going to go back to my web two thing, I'll pick Robin. And they get a poor user experience, right? Every action they might want to take requires six signatures if they want to do anything that's cross chain. It requires them to do a research project to put these kinds of things together to figure out how they can safely participate in this ecosystem. And what they want is not, you know, the moral equivalent of, I'm about to use an app. Does it run on Amazon? Does it run on Azure Cloud? I'm not sure. I should have kept It's like, no, no, no. Users want seamless access to multi chain liquidity. You know, they don't care where it is, they want their assets, if it's in, you know, that yield pool or that AMM, wherever it is, it's my assets and I don't care what chain it's on. They want a uniform entry point. Yeah, maybe, maybe there's a couple, but they want to be able to go in and access all these things in a simple way, right? And they want simple user experiences. When I go to, you know, I pull out my phone, click button, and have a hamburger delivered, right? I'm not thinking about all the currency transactions. I don't have to move my money from my bank to the intermediate pair that's going to escort until the driver says yes. I don't do any of that. I push button and hamburger a lot. That's the kind of user experience that users want. And so, providing that user experience is the chain abstraction to you, right? It is that, you know, going from the crypto chaos of a thousand potential entry points and a thousand applications to a simple, unified view with, with access to digital assets and services seamlessly across multiple chains, right? That's what chain abstraction is. It's the vision of what the user wants, what the user needs, and what we need to provide to them in order for this to matter at a much larger scale in the world. But that's hard to implement. And, there, and we'll talk a little bit about that. Agoric's approach is orchestration. That is, the capabilities to build user-friendly apps that's, that, that coordinate all these assets and services, right? And the coordination of these things in this connected but asynchronous world is the thing that's challenging. So let's take the simple case, right? I've got dollars burning all of my big in, in, in my ETH. Um, and I want Tia, Celestia's token that, that came out recently, and I want to stake it. Right? Should be straightforward. And there's a bazillion different applications where the user interface to actually do that turns out to be hard. Right? Because I've got to first onboard my money, then I've got to, I'm, going to, I'm going to swap, I've got to move it over to the swap machine that I'm going to use, and I have to figure out which of the several ones are going to be used. Some of them include moving the money across, some of them include delivering it to my destination, but none of them include helping me to set up to stake it. Right? I've got multiple wallets because some of it's on ETH and some of it's, it's on Cosmos or Solana or whatever it is, and I've got to use all these different things. And then I have to do my own staking. Some of them include some of the transfer, and put it all together. And each one of these is a research project that the user has to engage in, fearing at any step that they screw up, they'll lose them. And people are working on this, right? You know, heard, right? We understand that this is a problem we need to solve, and there's a bunch of great stuff going on, but they don't have the tools to solve it well. It's, hard. it's a hard problem because of the asynchronous nature of it. And so they don't have the tools to solve the bugs. Until now, or particularly March. Um, so the orchestration API is a works uh, technology to enable easily coordinating these assets and services across different channels. 
and I'll talk a little bit about that. So I always like having a, a code in my in my presentations because we are a developer community, right? Cypherpunks. So let's start with, by the way, this is familiar JavaScript, except it's executing on chain. Right? We're executing deterministic JavaScript reliably on a blockchain. This is something I want to take a thousand dollars. I'm just going to go through this scenario, and I'm going to want to put it into a, a Celestia account that is controlled by this smart contract on my behalf. I don't want to go make a Celestia account. I, I, I don't know, I don't have the tools, I don't have the gas fees, I don't have all the pieces I want. You know, smart contract should do that for me. Right? So that's what this is about. And once that's done, and you know, before we go on to this next line, once you know, I've reached across in this line of code, reached across IBC over to Celestia and said, hey, make an account that I control. And I get back a JavaScript object in my JavaScript program running on chain that gives me unique and exclusive access and control to that account. Okay? And, and, and my smart contract sits there. And if that, takes, uh, if that takes two seconds, great. If that takes 10 minutes, great. If that takes two weeks, great. Once that answer comes back, I've got a unique exclusive control of its account. Then I want to set up to send my money. Okay? And, and I'll pr presume here I've already got my money moved to, 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 to Noble, and I can talk about how it got there, but, but that's outside the scope here. I'm going to set up using a feature that happens to be available, you know, almost universally in the IBC ecosystem. Um, I'm going to set up a multi hop uh, uh, transfer that says, you know, abstract the go to osmosis and swap for T, right? Swap for Celestia as well. And then when you're done, send it over to, to this ICA account that I just created on the line before, that happened, you know, 10 minutes ago. And send that. And then wait for that to be done. And once that's done, where the, where the dollar, where the, the USDC came from Noble, which is uh, where native USDC and Cosmos, over to Osmos, just got swapped for Tia, and then sent over to I said over to, to my account on, on Celestia. Once that's done, then I'm gonna I'm gonna get the balance, find out how much did I get, how much arrived on Celestia, and once that comes back, and that's a cross-chain query, you know, that, that does all the verification, goes over IMC, uses ICO, and all sorts of stuff. And once that's done, then it's stable. Okay? And all of that happens, you know, after I push the button, I don't have to get a beer, right? All that happens asynchronously, how you know, however long it takes, updating the status, tracking all these things across whatever it is, four different chains, in order to make my push button get Tia user scenario work. And you know, in the end, the hamburger's delivered. No, wait, the, 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 the tea is delivered, not the steak. And if I wanted to add the next phase, once the staking is done, take that stake, you know, stake that, that Tia, get me some STTIA on Scribe, take that over to a Agoric, put it into a vault, make the vault, make the stable token IST on the different protocol provides, take that IST over to another chain, swap it for more Tia, come back here, stake that, and do that around until I've resolved my thing, and I've now doubled down on, uh, on Tia for the airdrop that's, that's, that's starting tomorrow. Right? That should all be a push button, and the software just does that, right? Computers have been doing this stuff in the 70s. Why is it taking us so long to do it? And the answer is, asynchronous programming is hard until you've got this simple ability to have long-lived durable processes that can do messaging to other chains, await the answer, and respond to it, right? So what we've got is that infrastructure with multi-block actions, right? If you've got a smart contract and it does any off-chain action, if it does even a message to another contract, you're not done for that transaction. You're not done for that block. It's going to be another block before you can proceed because you need to see what happens on that other, that other chain and the answer comes back, right? So that means everything that you do that is multi-chain is fundamentally async, is fundamentally multi-block. It's more a computational model that you get that done. And it deals with the async. You've got reactive contracts. Answer comes back. Now I can react to it. Now I can proceed. Right? IBC hooks is, is a good start, but just being able to say, here's what I want to do when I get the answer to this, turns out to be amazingly empowering. And it's what developers in Web2 have been used to for the last you know, 10, 20 years. Right? That is the standard program. And then finally, because it's JavaScript, the power of JavaScript is not just, you know, it's not just the most popular programming language on the planet because it's JavaScript. It's because it allows you to make frameworks and components and extend them yourself. And so that same infra where I just say, you know, wait until the reply comes back, you've got a timer service where I can say wait until 3 p.m., right? If you're doing a travel service where you're doing, you know, purchase stuff when, you know, price comes above, the, above whatever it is, 
Waiting 24 hours after the purchase so you know that it transitions into the now I've got the lockdown state. Or waiting however long in order to you know, something that's time-based, straightforward on chain is just, you know, a wait dot, you know, 15 milliseconds, right? The time is 15 milliseconds. And that same extensibility lets developers out there add libraries, right? So I can Built on top of that ICA, that, that, that interchain accounts abstraction, I can control an account on another chain, I can set up an XLR account, send GMP requests to it in order to be able to make requests off to file or Aave or or wherever. I can build an abstraction on top of that system the same way I have an osmosis swap that's built on ICA. I can have an, an, a deposit on the Aave that's built on on XLR, that's built on ICA, that's built on IBC, that's built on you know, all this chain stuff. From the JavaScript programmer's point of view, send the Aave over, you know, and it's just simple orchestration of all these activities across all these services and all these chains. Okay, so, there are several places where different services, different components fit in, right? Tokens are part of an orchestration infrastructure, right? You gotta have the notes in order to play some, right? You gotta have the assets that someone wants to move around and put into a curve on another chain or put into a lending protocol. And so tokens are required, right? Fungible, non-fungible, whatever, right? Services, right? If you're a lending protocol, great, someone can use their app and do lending on you of the tokens that are there. But if a smart contract on another system can unbond stuff, unbond stuff and when it's done, send it over to you to, to borrow against, now you've got much richer abstractions, you've got much richer ability to do, for example, multi-chain um, uh, 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 portfolio management, that's what And finally, infra, right? Lots of people here are building infra, whether that's whether, whether that's bridges and connectivity or architectures like RPCs, all those kinds of things are important infra that you want to be able to absorb into an asynchronous system and easily use, interleave with all these, these actions on average. And so everyone here participates in, 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 in is part of orchestration and also benefits from it, right? It is a good thing to have chain abstraction views that can include your components, and it's a good thing to have your components help build better, simpler user abstraction. And so this is one of those things where people can now come build these things. We're launching Hackathon, some, um, yeah, 75 k in prizes, focus on these interoperability, multi-chain, um, you know, chain abstraction use cases built with orchestration on um, multiple tracks around the different layers of the system, and it'll be a virtual hackathon over 45 days in, in early Q2. So these are the kinds of things where we want real projects building real things that they've been challenged by the tools they had available. This gives them a whole other tool set and a whole other programming capability that they can bring to the table to solve the problem that they're resolving. And build things like, you know, stablecoin yield maximizer, so on that, cross chain vault, so I can lock tokens up on that, uh, on that chain and use their economic power over on some other chain instead of having to bring it across. Um, staking manager, that simple case of, you know, I've got assets here and I want to stay there, or I've got stake tokens, I'll bond them in two weeks from now when that's done, go buy that thing. Right, go, go swap it for some other token and go stake it, right? Just being able to manage that and automate that, that has these delays, you know, where humans are stuck at following up on these things, you know, set it up once, push button, and you're done. And just sign it once, right? One signature enables these multi-chain multi-account actions. And then your contract swap, swap aggregate, right? What matters right now to people is TVL. What will matter in the future is TVA, total value accessible. Right? It doesn't matter if you're going to asynchronously access assets in your contract. It doesn't matter if they're right next to you or are they you know, one, you know, one hop away over on Osmosis or on Shadeswap or Asperger or any of these things. We want to be able to talk about that aggregate liquidity and do interesting value delivered to the user about that, that aggregate liquidity and stop talking to them about precisely you know, what web server they're, the application they're trying to use is. Right? They're on their app, they just want to push a button and get a hamburger. They need to stop talking about them to make it the game. So that, these are examples where we want people to come build them and, uh, and you know, help build the multi-chain. Come to the hackathon and help us all build this. Thank you very much.